Kirk. And this is Bird. It's the Kirk and Bird Show. And we are uh, blessed to have with us Jason Sterling, our Loudoun County football expert. Joe, welcome to the show, Jay. Thanks. Thanks, Rusty. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, we're going to, today we're going to cover um, the Loudoun County teams <laughs> and where they're going to, the, the playoff pairings and settings, and maybe make some predictions. Um, and, and if you now we we said we weren't going to, but was there any game this past weekend? And, and they may not be that was that was uh, uh, that was a shock or made a difference in the playoffs. So did kind of everything play out the way everyone thought in Loudoun County? Yeah, I think I think most of the games played out that way in in region in in Region D. There was there was a sort of a three teams battling for that eighth spot. There was Independence. Um, there was Brook Point, and um, there is the, the the team that's currently you know grabbed that eighth spot right now. So mm-hmm. uh, with Independence, Independence still had a chance, even if they you know lost to Stonebridge. Uh, but with the uh, you know it just didn't work out that way for them. So they, they you know the, the, there were three teams there. Only one team was going to get in, and and you know that's how it ended up uh, ended up happening there. So, but Independence, what was their final record? They didn't have a bad record, right? No, they ended up six and four. They lost their last four, though, and it was wow. scheduling rusty. I mean, they, they had an easier schedule to start with, and then uh, the back end schedule was loaded pretty hard. And uh, because they started out really strong, right? They did, but, they did yeah. for sure. And are they four? They're five. They're five. They're class five. They're class okay. five. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. There's some other reasons. Well, William Fleming's win got them in. Uh, you know, I, it was really coming down to those three teams, and then Fleming beating, beating I think William Bird, who they beat in their last game, ended up uh, getting that eighth seed. So, yeah, right. Well, since there's so many teams, there's 24 regions now, um, and there's so many teams. I think in the past 10 years, there were three or four zero win teams, and there's multiple two and three win teams in there now. So, it's a little watered down, but independence. I, I think 192 teams. In the yeah. public sector, make the playoffs. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm looking at it now, but in, in class five, now Fleming beat Independence. They got in with five wins, but I guess they played a tougher schedule and or, or beat quality better teams. And then, but but at, at the Region C, I see Prince George got in with a one and nine record, and they're playing Highland Springs. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they got they got to pay the piper right now, man. That's uh, yeah, yeah. I think Springs beat them like I think it was sixty three to nothing or something. So now, if I'm not mistaken, isn't Prince George where the old battlefield coach left to go there? Is that the school? Do you do you remember? You know, I don't know that, but you you may be correct on that. It was it was a place down there. I so I don't know. Like he, as yeah. soon as he left Battlefield, they went to the state <laughs> semifinals, yeah. and uh, and then this year they're, they're undefeated. So, all right, so let, let's get into the the playoffs. What we we you know what we see coming up. Uh, what stands out to you? So our the, the main area for for Loudoun County is going to be. Uh, and, and class five is going to be region D. Yep. Um, let's let's talk about some of those. I think we we kind of just talked about Fleming versus Stonebridge. I mean, yeah. one is one, nine and one, and one is uh, five and five. I, I don't know. Well, a big one is Hurricane Nicole because everybody's jockeying, and we got to talk because that is affecting. Jason and I were just talking about. Uh, Fleming's on the way up here to Stonebridge, and it's still a Friday night game. And I would say this late, that's not going to change. But why don't we start with uh, the Bulldogs? They're in the number one seat, as they should be. And they're going into, you know, their third straight playoffs where they'll have a chance to state championship. So, Jason, uh, let's talk about Stonebridge. I'm wearing the shirt. Um, yeah, I like a, it. A good team. A good team going to the playoffs. Always dangerous. Yeah, they're, and they're getting better. You know, I mean, they, they – they played some really. They play a very brutal schedule to start off with four class six teams. They're they're, they're rounding into some really good form here. Made made a change at quarterback. You know they're splitting time right now with between Zeke Wimbush and Mario Suarez at quarterback. Both Suarez had, had had a back injury that he he really didn't get a lot of snaps for the first half of the season at all. Started to get a few few snaps and then a few series, and now they're they're sort of splitting time, which I think Mickey likes a lot. Uh, getting both of those guys in there because. It's hard to hard to game plan when you don't know who's going to be your quarterback on your next series if you're a defense, right? And if both mm-hmm. guys are successful, 
you know, that's that's a that's a tough thing to defend because you're you know you're trying to study two quarterbacks and who's going to do what, and when he's in, it frees up Wimbush to you know do some other things that he's really good at. So I li- I like what they're doing. Their defense is really special right now. Uh, they they're just they're flying to the ball. They've had I think pick six returns in you know the last two games, multiple ones, and I think the Brook Point game, um, or I'm sorry the uh, um, the the Potomac Falls game. They had they didn't play Brook Point when they beat Potomac Falls, so they're really good. And I I think they're you know I think they'll they'll come out of the first round, second round they'll end up either facing Woodgrove or Riverbend. Uh, they did beat Woodgrove this year. They beat Riverbend last year. They haven't obviously played them this year. Uh, you know, that could, that, you know, the, the level of competition is going to get stiffer as they go along. And uh, I think most people probably would have Mountain View circled as the, the regional matchup you know, that we would see there. So that's, yeah, yeah, uh, that's that would probably. again also be a rematch. And, uh, you know, Mountain View is sort of a senior loaded team this year. So that could be a, uh, that could be very, very interesting. And they've, they've got some studs on that team. Yeah. Okay. Big. So, Jason, I'll ask you and Kirk, um, what I've, what we try to do is, okay, if there's any team out of this bracket that would that we're not looking at that could come out and, and maybe surprise us, or, or, or but once they win, we go, oh, you know what, maybe that's not a surprise. Who do you see um, with that with that uh, ability to do that? Patrick Henry out of Roanoke. <laughs> That's right. We just don't know. They uh, they're a three seed now. They climbed into three seed. They were they, they weren't a three seed going into last week. They ended up beating Salem in the last week of the regular season. I think any any time you get a win over Salem, yeah. regardless of you know where Salem is in their season or how you know Salem's one of those teams that always trends upwards as well as the season goes along. To, you know to pick them off in the last week of the regular season says something. They've got a kid, uh, Carmelo Taylor. Right. He is as fast as they come. He is going – I think he's going to Penn State, yep. uh, Rustin Kirk, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Got a number of Power 5 offers uh, under his belt, but he picked Penn State. He he is a problem. He is going to be a problem for for whoever they have to go up against. They've got Breyer in the first first round. And uh, Breyer's got some athletes that I think can can do some damage potentially offensively. I see maybe a, uh, an offensive shootout here between Patrick Henry and, uh, and Breyer Woods, maybe in the, the likes of a – you know, 35, 28 type game, something like that. But because that game's down in Roanoke, that's a long trip for Breyer, I think. And with Carmelo Taylor and how they're getting him the ball, I think uh, I think Patrick Henry Roanoke could be uh, could be a team that wins that game. And then I think they've, you know, they've got a shot here. I mean, they're they, they've really this is their year. I think to maybe do some damage here in the uh, deeper into the playoffs. So because they're sort of isolated in their own district down there, the, the William Fleming and Patrick Henry, Harrisonburg's the other team. They didn't make the playoffs. That are sort of the outliers geographically to this region. They don't yeah. get a lot of press. You know, it's it, you look at the, the Loudon teams or the Fredericksburg teams, and because of the sheer numbers of teams, you know, that's what's written about all the time. That's what people look at. That's what, you know, guys like you and I talk about. You know, mm-hmm. I think Patrick Henry and Roanoke's a very, very dangerous team, and they're hot right now. You know, they yeah. only lost two games this year. So, yeah. 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 I, think, okay. I think the winner of, um, that that bra- that lower is uh could be dangerous. I think Stonebridge is going to face Highland Springs, but uh, yeah. you know we, we want to wish Briar Woods luck. Uh, you know they've come back pretty fast. Uh, we knew they would, and uh, they're winning again. And that is a long bus ride. I hope they're doing charters. Uh, but there are three, you know, three Loudon uh, teams. Woodgrove's got to go down to Riverbend. That's a tough game, but Riverbend's coming off a loss where they were pretty beaten. Uh, soundly by Mountain View, uh, Rust. I got a question for you guys. Um, I, I've got Stonebridge um, coming out of this um, region. I, I don't think Stonebridge can beat Highland Springs. They're absolutely loaded, and I also like Maury. Uh, and we're going to get move on to four, but I also like Maury, and I like Green Run. Uh, Green Run's got the great quarterback, who's probably going to be a hokey, but. Do you guys, who do you have coming out of this region where all the Loudoun County teams are? Rusty, you like Stonebridge or? I got Mountain View. Okay, got you got Mountain, Mountain View. View. Yeah, right. I mean, before they lost, um, they lost to Colonial Forge, but that's a county rivalry game. And um, people were saying they were one of the best teams in the state. They're loaded with a lot of talent. They have good coaching. Um, and so I, I think, you know, that, that Mountain View will, will – 
can come out of this region. Would not be surprised if Stonebridge did, but I think Mountain View uh, will probably come out of here. And I think we don't really have to go into a whole lot of analysis on Region C. I think Highland Springs is, 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 is destined to come out of there. Um, and so if you want to move on to the other areas, I, I, I'm pretty sure coming out of Region B, Mari will do it, but I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if um, if if um, Lanceman River. Well, I was going to say Kikitan, just because I'm pulling for my man Jeff Super. <laughs> and uh, and then lastly, the other the other region I think though that's very strong is Green Run, Kempsville, um, Indian River, Tallwood. Like we we sat by the guy, a coach from Cox at the Fever's game. I, I I think Green Run will come out, but again, it's one of those weather things. If they're playing in bad weather, you know, in you know, in, in two weeks, um, it could make a difference because Green Run throws the ball and Kempsville can run. So, so Jason, for our, our Loudon people, I know. Well, I don't know, but I think you're going to pick Stonebridge. But who's the sleeper? I think you've said Patrick Henry. Yeah, I, possibly. You know, but if you look at Mountain View up and down, R Rusty, I know why Rusty's on these guys. I mean, their roster is loaded. They, they offensively, they, you know, Jackson Sigler, quarterback, running backs are good. The wide receiver's really good. They got a good tight end, a big tight end, not quite Riverbend, mega Barnwell size, but he's still big. Um, their linebacker guys, I think his name is Christopher Jones, and he's a mm -hmm. class of 24 guys. So he's only a junior. 6'3, 228. I counted 26 power five offers already, something wow. like that. Yeah. I mean, from, you know, Georgia, Tennessee, I mean, he, he's got the – Notre Dame, he's got the studs offering him. These aren't, you know, these aren't small schools that are going after him, you know, hitting in their Power Five conferences. These, these are the top programs. So, he's a load. Um, I think they'll end up playing Stonebridge. I think Stonebridge will beat him. I think it'll be a heck of a lot closer than last year's game, though. So, I do have Stonebridge. I think Highland Springs, you can pencil them in for sure. Uh, I like Green Run this year. Uh you know, and I think I think it's a rematch with Green Run and Maury. I Kempsville certainly I think, you know, could could win a game in the, if they get to that spot. They, yep. They're that good, but I'm gonna right now I'm gonna say Green Run and Maury, and I'm gonna say Green Run too. I think Green Run, and as much as I love my Bulldogs, I'll probably go Highland Springs versus Green Run in the for the championship. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. I would say that Green Run may have a shot. Uh, and like Rusty said, with the weather, if Kempsville can get them on a weather day and, and neutralize that quarterback, but uh, they've got a lot of teams. Um, before we shut out uh, or we stop talking about five, we do want to wish the Loudoun County teams uh, a great uh, first round. And I know for Briar Woods and uh, Woodgrove, you know, getting to the second round means a lot. Uh, another week of practice, the reps and, uh, so I want to wish us luck. And we also ask everybody to subscribe to us and we're going to give, give you content where we're just talking about, you know, the Loudoun County schools, which by the way, has uh, seven teams in the playoffs uh, or I believe eight teams in the playoffs, which yeah. is pretty telling. So um, why don't we move over to four, which is also four. Loudoun County heavy. Uh, and that's all rusty. Um it's the uh, the region C. Region C. Yep. Yeah. So we've got Loudoun County on, and Loudoun County uh, captains. We're going to have your coach on here, uh, Rydenball, Coach Rydenball, Matt Rydenball is going to be on in a little bit. But uh, no, that's a big headliner. Is Loudoun County is uh, the number one seed, and then the number two seed is Kettle Run, uh, which is a great team. And then uh, actually, the number two seed uh, is Tuscarora, or Kettle Run. Those are right there. But, uh, but then the way they do it. With this is they they just go district yep. against district, right? So they're going Dallas district against Northwest district. Yep. So one Kettle Run plays number four from the other district. From so the district, right? Yeah. So so that, that that's a little different because I remember that confused me last year. Um, so you, you you have Kettle Run who's undefeated, just like Loudoun County undefeated, and so they're they're just going to be going back and forth. So it. Right, so it's it's Kettle Run versus Heritage. You got Tuscarora versus Millbrook. You got Sharando against Loudoun Valley, and yep. you have Loudoun County against Hanley. So, um, Jason, well, out of these, 
What, what do you see? I know you know the Loudoun County schools. Where do we do we do we think the one? Because you see, there's a difference between a team that's number one going against a team that's like an eighth seed. Yeah. Then a one and a four. Right. You know. That's so. True. Yeah, no, I, you know, if you think about it, this is the only region that does it this way, as far as I know, in the entire state. There's a couple of regions that have buys in the first round because they right. don't have a deep region volume wise. So more they, right, I think more class one has a few buys out there. This right. is the only one that does. And, and the reason they can do this is because they're, they're, there's only two districts that represent their, their, their region. They, you know, so they can divide this up there. I think there's, maybe eight or nine teams in the Dulles district. And I think seven in the Northwest district or something like that. So uh, I'm, I'm going to lean now towards the, the Dulles guys. So I think that the two best teams out of there are County and Tusky. I think their schedules are, are tougher. I think they're battle tested. I think Tusky's got playoff experience County, as you guys are going to talk to to coach riding ball here, you know, soon his, his guys are tough. He had, he was just named the Dulles district coach of the year. Well, his done. linebacker is the defensive player of the year. He had nine guys on first team, seven guys on second team. He's loaded. He's got a really good team. Maybe nobody stands out as an exceptional, exceptional player, but, but they are all very solid players. They're very balanced in Loudoun County. They, they, they play really good offense, really good defense. And on the offense, they, they, they run and they pass equally as well. So I think when you have those types of combinations, you don't have to get into a high scoring game. You don't have to hold somebody under six points. You can win a game a lot of ways. You can really control the second half of games, in my opinion, if you have that type of balance. I think County has that. You know, Kettle Run, I know, Rusty, you've been on them all year. You like them. They're also undefeated. Yep. Very good my team. My only fear about that is they haven't had the schedule strength yet, and I don't know how tested they're going to be against a good team like like County or Tusky as they mm -hmm. get deep into the, into the region. So I'm going to say one of those two teams will come out. I personally think it could be a rematch. Uh, between those two teams from the regular season game, which was a which was a very close game, yep. wins that one. I, it's probably a coin flip between County and Tusky. Okay, I would say that um, Tuscarora is going to have a revenge factor because that game was so close. And it's uh, if they and, and plus they're going to have to beat a really good Kettle Run team. Um, so I, I see those holding. I, I think we're going to have an all Loudon um, regional semifinals. And I would say this. Um, I think whoever wins that region has a shot at the state championship, but we'll get into that. So we just want to wish Tuscarora. Um, and by the way, Heritage is in there. We don't want to forget about it. Yeah. And Valley. And Valley. And Valley. Right. And Valley. So I, I think it's um, actually, Kettle. I believe Kettle Run, Tuscarora. I like Tuscarora coming out of that. And I like County uh, and Valley. So that'll that'll be a, a good game. But um, so if let's say Tuscarora or Loudoun gets to the state semifinals, they're going to be facing uh, the Region D that's pretty much uh, Central Virginia um, and, you know, the uh, Salem, uh, Forest, Lynchburg. So EC Glass, traditional power, state champion team, some great players. Um, they're in there. They're the number one seed. Louisa County, who's look out for Louisa County. They're extremely good. Matt, they have a couple of freshmen. Now, I know when you hear the word freshman in playoffs, you're thinking, okay, how much of an impact can these kids make? Savion Hyder, I think that's his last name. I think I'm pronouncing it right. He is going to be a star for years to come. Wow. Go check out some film if you haven't had a chance to see him for Louisa yet. He is running. I mean, he's running all over people. As a, I believe he's probably only, what, 15 years old, maybe. Right. Uh, really good. Uh, so I, I Louisa's again, strength of schedule, maybe not quite there. That would be something I think you'd keep your eye on. I, you know, I'm, I'm guessing probably glass and Louisa end up uh, fighting that one out for the right to play the, uh, you know, the winner from, uh, from the Northern Virginia area. What do you think, Rusty? Who do you like coming out of uh, D with glass and those teams? You know, glass is, I, mean, I was watching, looking at some of um, Andre Kendrick stuff today but I, I think that Luis is going to come out of there they 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 just can ball man I like, I like Luis also I think Luisa will will come out of that that region okay I like Tusky or county uh to be to, to, to win that side okay and face and we'll go through this and then we'll talk about six and wrap it up but the other side is 
very loaded. So we go to Region A, which is Hampton Roads heavy. Uh, Warwick is the number one seed, which was a little surprising. Kings Fork is number two. And then we've got a bunch of teams in there. Uh, War Hill, which is a newer Williamsburg school. Uh, mm -hmm. I like Kings Fork, War, um, War Hill. And then I like Warwick and Churchland. And Churchland can be dangerous. Churchland could get to, they've got the kid that's like up to 25 offers where he only had one uh, a month ago. And it's looking like Notre Dame is going to be the place. I know Virginia Tech's going after him, but, uh, and I don't have his name handy. Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, so I like, I'm going to stay with Kings Fork. I uh, want to get your take on that, Rusty. And then uh, Jason, uh, I know, Rusty, you got some feelings about this. So, Yes. So, like I said, with my deep analysis on this region, um, it's very, very simple. <laughs> Warwick will come out of this region because the head coach is a fraternity brother. He's an alpha man, and we both pledged in the spring of 90, and we were both number ones online. You can't do any better than that. Like, that's 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 football right there. <laughs> so I got Warwick winning that 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 uh, bracket, and then um, and then you know we'll, we'll talk about uh, Region B, but Warwick without a doubt, Kings Fork, you know, could would be my second choice. Uh, and if I was to say if there was a surprise team to come out of there, um, uh, I, I think Churchland could be it. The yeah. truckers, the truckers, yeah. I love them. My yeah. favorite mascot, I think, in all the state, man, the truckers. What do you think, Jason? I, I tell you, it's, uh, you know, if that the head coach of Warwick, you said you, one of your fraternity brothers, Rusty? Yeah. Well, I can't bet against that, man. Listen, <laughs> I, I, I like Kings Fork, though. You know, I yeah. people are now going to say, look, because they, they they outplayed Oscar Smith in that game when they when they lost. They outgained him by like 200 yards, I think. Oscar Smith had several um, – special team touchdowns I think uh, in that yeah. game but and people are going to want to diminish Oscar Smith now you know obviously after after the Thieves beat down but I I'm going to go Kings Fork you know I I I think they I think they're there but uh I wouldn't be surprised Rusty if Warwick Warwick comes out of that region that's a I think that's a three or four teams right now that sort of roll the dice could come out of that region um yeah yeah the problem is I think whoever they face next in their game uh you know, in the semi is going to be uh, going to be brutal. I, you know, and I'm yeah. sure you're going to go. Right <laughs> Kirk, I mean, it, you know, to me, Denwoody, Denwoody, I think Ooh. the top four team in the state, frankly, right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, if I could give you my top four, I would give you Highland Springs, Freedom, Phoebus, and then Denwoody in that order. And I think those four schools are have separated themselves from everyone else by by just a little bit. So yeah, they put it on Thomas Dale. You know, yeah, they crushed Thomas Dale. Well, that's a great transition is Region B, which um, is unbelievable. It's heavy in that it's got King George, but it also has Verina. So uh, oh, it has Verina, the defending state champ, and their only loss is to Highland Springs. Yep. It's got Eastern View. Eastern View's got some talent. Yep. Their receivers are incredible. Um, it's got King and, George. They're nine and one. Yeah. Nobody, nobody talks about them. I mean, right. yep. Hanover, I mean, there's some <laughs> – they're going to be some good teams that go home very early in yeah. that region. Well, I wanted to point out the kid that I, I, is Brandon Hillman, the quarterback, and he's like a utility player. He, he can play a bunch of positions. I think he's going to end up on defense. He's actually going to be at Kentucky this week, and there's a big game at Kentucky. Um, so, And I just looked at his offers. He had North Carolina A&T. Virginia uh, Tech offered, and now it's you know a bunch of SEC offers, Oklahoma, um, so I'm hoping the Hokies get him one cliff note in Division Five. Uh, Zeke Wimbush just went to Zeke Wimbush just went to Pittsburgh. That's a team that's hot. I think uh, Zeke staying at Charlotte with the coaching changes. You know, I know he's at Wake looking at him. So Pittsburgh is an up and coming program. We might see Zeke Wimbush uh, as a Panther. Uh, I I'm going to pick Denwitty out of here um, and Rusty. I tell us your Verina story because I think you like them, right? Yeah. Oh, to be the king, you got to beat the king, and right now they're still the king. So I'm gonna. <laughs> I mean, you know, Verina they they had an incredible season last year. Um, who knows if Den Whitty had played Highland Springs, they would have taken an L, and we'd all we would we'd be doing this differently. So I, I, I like I like Verina. 
Um, they have a lot of talent, great coaching. Um, you know, last year they won the basketball and football state championship. Um, so I, I like Verina. And then if I was going to pick a, a, a team that could, could pull an upset, I mean, I don't think King George would be an upset if they're 10 and 0, but King George could come out of there and, and Eastern View, Eastern View. Um, but like that Eastern View, my gosh, like that four or five matchup is two, eight and two teams. Yep. <laughs> Yep. So, um, but yeah, I like, I like Verina. All right. So we're going to have a, a Tuscarora or Loudoun County facing um, like Louisa County yep. or Glass. And I like Louisa County coming out of there. And then we've got Dinwiddie or, and that's a good point, Rusty. That's a great one. Whoever comes out of there. I think Region B, the winner, right. you can survive Region B. Yep. Win. Right. So, uh, you know, Kings Fork or Churchland or Wark is, is going to play Tuscarora or Dinwiddie. Uh, you know, I'll go ahead and just say I, I like uh, Kings Fork playing uh, Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie beating um, Kings Fork for the finals at Liberty. And then I like uh, Tuscarora facing um, Louisa County. And then I like, I like Tuscarora to win that because they're going to be battle-tested. And if you look at their second-round game, with Tuscarora, um, they're going to be facing what should be a very, very good Kettle Run team, and then they're going to have to beat what I think is Loudoun County. So um, I think that's the way we see it. Now let's finish okay. off with six, and Hurricane Nicole comes back in because, Rusty, we've been talking about it. Um, we got one team in six, and that is John Champ with uh, arguably the most dynamic quarterback in Virginia, Patrick Bryan, but they're going to be playing Force Park. And the reason why Nicole, Hurricane Nicole's playing in is because Champ is a passing team. And we're going to ask Rydenball about Champ, but they're a passing team. And if it's raining and windy, um, that's going to shut that passing attack 40, 50 throws a game. Um, Jason, what's your take on that? If, if when they, I, I would assume they're going to play Friday night. Yeah, if they haven't moved, like you said, if they haven't moved these games yet, I think today, Maybe maybe by midnight would probably be the limit because you know these teams are going to have to get on the road tomorrow afternoon. So it definitely changes the dynamic of that game. I still think Champ may pull it out. I think they're slightly better than for playing Forest Park, right? I believe. Yep, yep. Now Forest Park's one of those teams that yeah they're sort of up and down. Some weeks they're you know you're like wow that's a good Forest Park team, man. And then a couple you know then they'll maybe they'll give you something you're like okay they're you know maybe they're not as good as I thought so they they sort of ride this this little bit of up and down wave too similar to Champ Champ can do this do the same thing so I uh -huh. do think Champ I do think Champ pulls that game out if the weather is just atrocious though and it's forty five mile an hour winds and you know raining sideways it it's going to make it tough on Patrick we'll see what kind of, if he if he has a great game, passing game in the, in horrible conditions his offers will start to fly in yeah yeah now that's yeah. Friday. Right, guys? That's going to be Friday, not Saturday. Right now it's Friday. It's still okay. Friday. All, most of the other games have switched to tomorrow. Yep. Um, so yeah. I, I, with this, it's not just that they're a good passing team, but Forest Park, and I've seen many of their games, they are a run team. They've got one of the best offensive lines I've seen, and they they run. And their court is not just – that they have a threat because they're running back. Uh, they're running back. Cook had, I think, about a thousand yards. But they're they're one of their biggest threats is Quentin Pulley, the quarterback um, for Forest Park. And and when they go heavy, and 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 they they've got everybody bunched in, and then they got tight ends and fullbacks, and then they let the quarterback run. It's 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 usually unstoppable. So doing that though in in bad weather. You know, I would I would say Forest Park has a chance. If it's just a regular weather day, I don't know if they can keep up with with Champ because Champ can score so quick. And, and I saw that when they played, you know, Colgan, my son's team. So, uh, so so you know, think about any of these teams that are actually attempting to play on Friday night. Ball security is going to be everything. Yeah, Friday night would be the night you would see, you know, sevens beating twos or sixes beating threes. Yep. If you catch a, you know, maybe one team's better, but they put the ball on the ground four times. That neutralizes everything, and then you got an even game going into the last possession. So, I think Friday, the teams that have, you know, are still going to look to play on Friday night. That's where I would start to look for your upsets potentially because of that weather factor. Right. Yeah. Yep. And they, they earned the right to play Freedom Woodbridge, which <laughs> is arguably one of the best two three teams in the state. You know, in the next round. So, 
my question to both of you, uh, do you see anybody but Freedom Woodbridge coming out of that Region B in um, Class 6? I don't. No, I, 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 I don't either. I, the Patriot and Battlefield are good teams. Uh, you know, they sort of battle each other out. Uh, you know, I don't know. Toss up game, you know, they, but I uh, free to me, freedom. They've got that by that bye week at the end there, you know, that, that, that carries over. They're well rested. They're uh, I've, I've got freedom Woodbridge, you know, winning that division. And I, and I think winning it pretty handily. I think they're, I know they've, they've not had, so they've been, they've had some good regular seasons in the past and had some, some playoff losses that make you scratch your head. This is not that, that time of, they're, they're going to, they're going to win this, I think, pretty hands down that region. So, yeah, I, no, I agree. Yeah, I know what you. So let's uh, let's close out with our picks for six. Um, up in A, which is basically that's it for uh, the rest of the states, Northern Virginia. Um, so we've got the seven five seven and the Richmond teams, and that's all pretty much all of their Division Six teams. Um, if Oscar Smith. Gets past Western Branch, which I think they will. I like them to win it because I think the Phoebus defeat grounded them. But I actually like Manchester to get past Thomas Dale. So I like um, I like Oscar Smith and Thomas Dale, and I like Oscar Smith coming out of there to face Freedom Woodbridge at Freedom Woodbridge. Um, what y'all thought on the the Hampton Roads, the Region A? Uh, going uh, into that. Oscar Smith, you know, should win it, but I, I, I like Thomas Dale coming out of there. If, if you give, you know, Oscar Smith, you know, uh, the fact that they played Phoebus, one of the best teams, well, the same thing happened to Thomas Dale. They played Dinwiddie, one of the best teams, and that's their only loss. So um, I, I like Thomas Dale. They they won a state championship, you know, a number of years ago. Yep. Um, I, I just – I think they can do it. What I want to see is how Oscar Smith rebounds uh, from, from, from the loss. Be, be, you know, and, and so I think though that will be the final for that region, but I, I, I like Thomas Dale uh, to pull that out. I'm going to go out on a limb on this one. I'm going to give you Manchester to come out of there. Okay. Yeah. Their loss was early, very early in the season to Highland Springs, which That's right. you know, there's That's no right. shame in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the thing with me with Oscar Smith now, they, there's a couple of games where you're scratching your head, not just the Phoebus game, Western Branch, two, I mean, they haven't scored in a couple of weeks. The, the Kings four game, they were outplayed, even though they won. It just, it's too much starting to add up for me right now. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to take, you know, Western Branch is a great team, but I'm going to, I'm going to say Manchester comes out of that one. Yeah. Okay. Now the and, other I think freedom beats Manchester. So. Okay. Okay. And so who do, let's go ahead and who, who do we think we're going to have in the state final? Um, I, probably I would say freedom. Um, you know, the Fairfax schools, they're, they're good, but you know, I don't, I don't know. You, you want to quickly just say who we might think is, co is coming out of C and D. Yeah, I'm going to give you Centerville taking on uh, Fairfax. I like, I like that, I, too. That's what I, I think, too. Yeah, and I, I mean, look, Tony Rojas, you know, he got offensive and defensive player of the year in his district. I mean, you might see that at class one. You rarely see that at class six. I mean, that's pretty it's pretty crazy. He's a difference maker. I think Fairfax will ultimately win that region. But I think Centerville with Isaiah Raglan uh, jamming the ball down your throat, he's going to uh, – I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna beat Fairfax. I think they'll go on to play uh, Freedom in the uh, in the Class Six Championship. Okay. Yeah, Is that I agree. I agree. I like that too. Freedom and uh, Fairfax. But I will say this before we close, Rusty. Sorry. Is um, Fairfax is gonna have to earn it? You know, they're they're looking at the winner of uh, Lake Braddock Robinson, and then South County, who's a very good team, um, is gonna face West Springfield, and whoever comes out of there is gonna be battle tested. But with Tony Rojas. You know, would be in the great line of Matt Millen and Shane Conlin and LeVar Arrington, the great linebackers out of uh, Penn State because he can run. I do like Fairfax. And uh, yep. I uh, – we'll, we'll transition. We can go ahead and transition to Coach um, from Loudoun County. Uh, thanks for joining us, Coach. Coach Matt. Rod, what, how did – riding ball? Riding ball. Riding ball. Riding ball. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we were just kind of uh, covering the what were we, the the division. Loudoun County teams. We we were yeah, going Loudoun County, County teams County. primarily Loudoun County, but we we went over four, five, and six. Um, yep. And we none of us picked uh, your school. I'm just joking, cause <laughs> <laughs> that's not look, true. 
That's not true. Before before we go, what, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pause right now, and we want to thank Jason uh, yeah. for joining us, and then we'll get we'll come right back with Coach uh, Rodden Bar. Uh, this has been Kirkenberg.